video, you need both your hands, but we still won't use the bow yet. Your instrument should have six tapes of different colors on your fingerboard. If it doesn't have any tapes yet, that's okay, I'll put them on soon. Just pretend it has tapes for the time being. If your bass has some tapes, but not all six, your top two tapes are probably the same as my white tapes. We're only going to use the top three tapes for now, the white, the black, and the white. Start off by holding your left hand up. Your fingers should be relaxed and curved. Now move your hand to the neck of the instrument. Your thumb will go on the back of the neck while your fingers hover over a string. On bass, the G string is our thinnest string. Touch it with your fingers and then lift them up. It doesn't have to make a sound yet. Now move them over one string to the D string, touch down, and lift up. Then move over to the A string, touch and lift up, and to the E string, touch and lift up. Notice that when I change strings, in order for my fingers to reach, my elbow moves up and down, just like your right hand elbow did when pitzing. Practice this motion by jumping from the G string to the E string. Now take your first finger and put it down on the G string. Your wrist should be just a little bit curved and your thumb should be relaxed. Slide your arm up or down until your first finger is on the top white tape. If I was the one who put on your finger tapes, then I tune them so that the middle of your finger will look like it's right on the middle of the string. But keep in mind that when you're playing, you may or may not be able to actually see your finger tapes. Next, keep your first finger down and add your second finger onto the black tape. Make sure it's right on the middle of the tape. If you don't have a black tape, then just put it down halfway in between your white tapes. The third finger doesn't get a tape, it just goes in the space between, and then your fourth finger will go on the next white tape. We're not going to use the black tape notes yet, and since your third finger doesn't get its own pitch, for now, your second, third, and fourth fingers are going to be moving together as a team. Try lifting those three fingers on and off together a few times. Do your second and fourth fingers land right back on the tapes? Now slide your whole hand up and down the strings a couple times. See if you can land right back on the tapes. Where does your thumb end up when your fingers get back to the tapes? For some people, it'll be right underneath their middle finger. For other people, it'll be in between their first two fingers. Go with whichever spot feels more comfortable for you. Just make sure your thumb is pointing sideways. Okay, now let's go to your E string. Lift your elbow out a little bit so that you can reach. Put your first finger down and then your second, third, and fourth down. Lift them up and go to your A string. Your elbow will move down a little bit. Put your first finger on the A, and then your second, third, and fourth. Now lift them up and go to the D string. Do your first finger, then the other ones. And then go to the G string. First finger, and the rest. This is basically the pattern for the white finger pattern which is what you need to play in order to pass your white belt. I'll show you how it goes. This uses both hands at the same time. Your left hand will tell the instrument what note to play, and your right hand will play that note using pizzicato. Start by pitching open E. Open means that you have no fingers down on your left hand. But even though we're not using any fingers for that note, we want our hand to be ready for the next note. Now, put one finger down on the E string and play it. Notice that a different pitch comes out. Now, add your second, third, and fourth fingers and play that. Since we've run out of fingers, go on to the A string. Make sure you start with an open string, and that both your hands move to the next string. Also, make sure you don't play the black tape note. Only play the white tapes and the opens. Go on to the next string and the next string. When you finish the last string, we go backwards and lift fingers off one white tape at a time. So we go four, one, and then open. Make sure you remember to do the open strings because that's its own important note as well. After the open string, 
Move on to the next string and start with all your fingers down. Go four, one, open. And then to the next string. Four, one, open. Let me show you again a little faster. The speed you go is up to you. You can pass your white belt whether you go fast or slow. If you go really fast, then you may want to use your fingertips, but if you go a normal speed, then use the side of your fingers. In order to earn your white belt, I have to see three things. First, how is your posture and are you holding your instrument right? Second, how does your right hand look? Are your thumb and first finger in the right part of the fingerboard so that you can make the fullest sound? Third, how does your left hand look? Are your fingers landing right on the tapes? Make sure you don't play the note until your finger's in tune. Okay, chances are when you try this the first time, you won't get a full sound. Instead, you'll get a thunk. A thunk happens when your fingers aren't pushing the string down hard enough. It has to push down hard enough that the part of the string past the finger doesn't vibrate at all. This is because in science, small things make higher pitches than low things. Think of it like people. Babies have really high voices, but adult men like me have the biggest larynxes, so our voices are the lowest. If you don't press the string down hard enough, then the string past your finger will still be trying to make a sound. But if you do press hard enough, then you've effectively made the string smaller than it really is. This is also why we're using our second and our third fingers right now, even though we're not playing any notes with them. Right now, they're helping the pinky push down the string all the way. Right now, you probably have really small muscles in your hand, and so you're going to have to push down really hard. In fact, since basses have the thickest strings, you're going to have to push down harder than everyone else. But as you play more and build your muscles, you won't have to push down quite so hard. And this is good. Remember that our end goal is to play as relaxed as possible. After you do this for a while, your fingertips might start to hurt. As your skin gets used to it, it will toughen up. We call this callousing. Your skin will literally get thicker and harder, although it will be such a small change you can't actually see it. It takes a couple of weeks for the calluses to form. So in the meantime, if your fingers are hurting, you can gently massage them like this. If your fingers hurt too badly, remember that pain is your body's way of warning you about something. Only you can decide when to keep practicing and when you need a break. Alright, I hope you enjoy practicing the white finger pattern. Sometime soon in class, kids will get a chance to test for belts. But if you get to the point that you feel great on your white finger pattern but haven't had a chance to test, you can always move on to the second degree white belt using the bow. Sometimes kids will work a couple belts ahead of the class and then when they get a chance to test, they'll test for all of them in a row. See you next time.